Snyder, this is Dan Wooding reporting for you from the Movie Guide Awards here in Hollywood, California. You know, these are also known as the Christian Oscars, and this is a time where they honor the best in Hollywood instead of attacking the worst. So sit back and enjoy this special program. So we got together for a couple of hours with Brian. Yeah. He signed books for me. We're talking with Ted Bear. Ted, this is the 26th anniversary. Take us back to that very first day at the... I think you were there at the I very first there. day. Dan, yeah. you've been here from the beginning. <laughs> you know, what we're doing is I grew up in the entertainment industry. I was a wild and uh, left-wing comic pink a rat. And God found me and rescued me out of nowhere. Yeah. And Dan Wooding helped me to uh, grow in faith and values. <laughs> and we decided to start this awards to encourage people who are doing the good, the true, and the beautiful. Yeah. So it's a wonderful opportunity. We're grateful for being here. And the award show gets better and better every year. When you started, I believe it was in one family or faith film that Driving Miss Daisy? When we when we started, there was one film with con positive Christian content in 85. Yeah. By the time uh, we started this award ceremony in 91, it was uh, actually just a little press conference. At that time, it was 10%. Yeah. Now it's 62%. Wow. What, why, why do you keep on encouraging people to get involved with faith films? Because it keeps working. People keep doing it. It's yeah. getting bigger and better all the time. And is Hollywood receptive They're to that? They're very message? receptive. Yeah. I love them. They're here. Yeah. They're some of my favorite people. Hi, Kelly Stables, and uh, I'm on Superstore right now, and uh, Malibu Dan on Pure Flix. Right. So tell me why you're here. Well, I am here to support my very good, beautiful friend, Jennifer Taylor. She's going to be in God's, the new God's Not Dead movie, and she's also presenting tonight. Right. Now, you're an actress as well. In, mm -hmm. in, and what's the Pure Flix, the Pure Flix movies you've been in? Oh, it's just a new TV series. It's a it's a sitcom about yeah. uh, a, a, a family, and it's starring David Ayer White. Oh, I know David. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's going to be here tonight. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, so I play his wife. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Is it is it tough being a Christian in this business? I think it's tough being a Christian anywhere because yeah. we have we hold ourselves to uh, standards and um, you know we have certain ways that we try to to live our life and it's it's not the easiest way, right? right. But I think it's you know helps us in the long run. Yeah. Do you welcome all the publicity that's come out about some of the people in the business now, especially women who've been, you know, suffered at the hands of people? Is that something that you you welcome or not? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. They say the truth will set you free. Yeah. And it's so important for women to not feel ashamed of something that happened to them, right? And it's so important to come into the light and to speak the truth about things that have been accepted before that are absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, yeah and it's a very amazing time that's going on in our, our world right now and people are opening their eyes and talking about things and absolutely. Yeah, yes. Wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. My name is Rick Graver. I'm the president of the Rind and Harry Bradley Foundation based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're a large uh, funder of conservative causes around the country. We do some of our work in Wisconsin, but we do most of it outside. Uh, we're a supporter of this organization, Movie Guide, and just delighted and thrilled to be here. It's my first time. Now, are you sponsoring one of the awards tonight? The Faith and Freedom Award. Okay. Now, what, what does that entail? What, you know, it, how does a person submit a film under that well, category? it really talks about the importance of democratic capitalism. Yeah. And how that has made this country and, and our country's economy the strongest in the world. Yeah. And how were you first attracted to Movie Guide and, and the work of Dr. Our, our foundation has supported Movie Guide for several years. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're concerned about culture change. Yeah. This is an organization that's trying to do that yeah. and having some great success. So we applaud them and, and obviously we support it with our, our resources. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jennifer Taylor and I am playing Meg in God's Not Dead, A Light and Darkness, which comes out March 30th. Tell us a little bit about your own career. The first time I ever thought I wanted to be an actress, I was in second grade watching Annie. <laughs> on Broadway and I'm like, oh, I want to be an actress, yeah. but I might as well have said I wanted to go to the moon. <laughs> 
because I come from, you know, my dad's from Italy. He's a grocery store manager, not in the business. What was your first role? Oh, my first role, that's actually a funny story. Um, I booked a part in Wild Things. Mm -hmm. um, it was a movie with Matt Dillon and Denise Richards. And, um, and it was a great part because I still lived in Florida. And then I'm like, oh, I should probably learn to act now. <laughs> so I kind of do things backwards. Yeah, yeah, great. Now, this is a, an event that honors family-friendly movies and yeah. that. Are you a person of faith yourself? Yes, I am. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that, how, how that all came about? Um, what, my faith? Yeah. Well, I, I was born Catholic, and yeah. then I went away yeah. from it, but I always I always felt that God was with me and there. And then um, after I had my first child, I'm like, I just really felt the need to get back yeah. and um, found a church, and I adored it, and I knew that that's where that I was meant to be. So, you know, I, I work in the kids' ministry at our church, so yeah. uh, I teach the story at, at church. It's, it's like a, it's a big part of my life. Right. Now, God's Not Dead 2, is it? The, the way no. You there was God's Not Dead 1 and 2. This is, technically it's 3, but it's a standalone. You don't have to see it. Um, uh, and so it's, it's called what? God's Not Dead, A Light and Darkness. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the plot. Don't give too much away. Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> um, well, Pastor Dave, um, he he goes through a, a lot when his church, which is on a college campus, gets burned down. Yeah. So he he goes through a lot through this story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and is it a, was it is it a tough? Have you filmed it now? Or you, yes. No, yeah. it's it's done. Was it a tough one to do? No, it was wonderful. Um, I, just everybody on it involved was was great. I love the story. Like yeah. when I read the script, I was like, yes. Yeah. Um, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, it was it was just really good all around. I'm so excited for people to see it. Right. And, and finally, all the publicity that there's been about from a lot of the actresses who've had to put up with a lot of bad stuff. Do you welcome that the fact that it's now come out into the open? Um, I'm glad. I'm I'm glad. I just like the name of our movie, A Light and Darkness. Yeah. Shine a light on any darkness. Yeah. Okay, and then it's not dark anymore. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. We're speaking with Wink Martindale and his lovely wife Sandy. Yeah. And Sandy, can you show your little Wink? Elvis. This is the spirit. Wink. Now, First love, last love. Now, before we go any further, you dated Elvis for a little while. For six years, yes. Tell us a bit about that. You went to, you used to come to your dad's house. He you? came to my dad's nightclub, and yeah. that's where he saw my picture, and he wanted to date me. So um, my mother drove me up to the club. I met him, and he said he wanted to date me. And my mother said, I don't care if you're King Farouk. My daughter's only 14. And he told my mother she could come on the dates. She came on the first three dates. He promised her he'd be a gentleman and take good care of me. And he was, and he did. And I danced in a lot of his movies. Oh, you did? Tell yeah, me. I'm in Viva Las Vegas. And Margaret, Elvis, and me on the roulette but you, table But you dancing. see who won. Yeah, yeah. So how, <laughs> how did it come about that you captured her and said, did Elvis and you fight over in the one? No. No, not at all. I had met Elvis in Memphis the night he was discovered in 1954. So we came at Elvis from two completely different directions. Me yeah. from Tennessee, her from out here. Yeah. And uh, we met in uh, Palm Springs at the old Gene Autry Hotel, oh. totally apart from Elvis. And I didn't know until I started dating her that she had dated Elvis for six we, years. We know a lot of the same people, we just didn't know them together. <laughs> so we have a lot of mutual friends, so we had a lot in common. Wow. So how did you propose to her? Did you get down your Well, or? no, I did not. Uh, we were dating for quite a while, and she worked for Bob Eubanks at the time, and uh, she had to travel some. She was back in Nashville working with Bob on some... Dolly uh, Parton and Barbara Mandrell. Okay, yeah. yeah, they were producing her show. Yeah. And uh, I was sitting at home in the apartment one Saturday night, and I was lonely as could be, just drinking my coke. Uh, I think I was drinking a cup of coffee. Could have been a martini, I can't remember. But I thought, shoot, this is not good. Good. And I picked up the phone and I called her and I said, 
this is not working out real good. When you get back, I want to do something about this. And that was sort of my way of proposing. Wow. She got back, we got married. And wh when was that? What year? And that was 43 years ago. 75. Wow. Congratulations. Thank August 2nd, 1975. Where were you both when you heard about Elvis's passing? I was on the air at KMPC. I worked for Gene Autry at the time, and it was 2.20 in the afternoon, and a newsman came in and whispered to me because he knew we were friends. He didn't want to just do the bulletin on the air without me knowing about it first. So that's the way I heard about it. And uh, she was at lunch with some friends in Beverly Hills. Yeah, I was at La Scala Boutique, and I always had my little radio with me because I listened to him on the radio every day, and that was when you had little transistor radios yeah. in the those days, no iPhones. And he got strange on the air, and I thought something's wrong. And they had like a pause. So, and then it, there was, so I had to go upstairs to the to the phone to yeah. make a phone call. And I called him on the air, and he said the newsman had just said to him off air because he knew he knew Elvis. Elvis just died, and I wanted you to know first. And he was so choked up, it was so hard for him to get, but I knew something was wrong immediately. And, yeah, because the, the last half hour on the air, I just segued one record in the, to the other. I couldn't say couldn't anything. Say, yeah. And then we cried for like two weeks. We do, do you think Elvis would have enjoyed it? If yes, he, to he would have loved tonight? it. Yeah. Elvis, Elvis was a strong believer. Yeah, he was, and, and he, he would have—he would enjoy this kind of event. He would have been here, music. and he would have sang, "How great thou art." <laughs> if you could sum up Movie Guide, you know, how would you sum it up? Well, I've been coming. Both of us have been coming since the very first one. In fact, I hosted the very first Movie Guide Awards when it was a very small. The first organization, club. yes, yeah, there. and uh, we look forward to coming. It's one of the events we look forward to every year because we are strong believers and we believe in what Ted Bear stands for. Yeah, and uh, it's just uh, it's just a great event. What, why do you think there's there's now so many Christian movies coming through? I mean, because people are getting tired of all the blood, gore, and guts and terrible movies. Yeah, yeah. And when, and when a movie comes along like Let There Be Light, yeah. it just makes us want more movies of that of that, of that that ilk, right. you know? So I hope we get them. Right. So how can people pray for the two of you? I mean, what are the points that you need for prayer? Well. Longevity. <laughs> yeah. As we more get time, older, longer. More time together. <laughs> more, more time on this earth. Yeah. And, uh. And like I said, I grew up in a Christian home, and uh, I still feel very strongly uh, in the Bible and what uh, the Bible stands for. I believe in God, and uh, Sandy does as well. And uh, any prayers for us should be in that direction. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And let's Thank you. I'd like to welcome Joey Luthman, who is starring in The Long Way Home, which I understand has been nominated. Yes. Tell us about the film. Yes. Is well, it, it's, it's a series? It's a miniseries on National Geographic. Yeah. And uh, it's very incredible to see the journey of this series. It's about Black Sunday, which is April 4th, 2004, a mm -hmm. uh, platoon of 19 men. They go into Sauter City, Baghdad. They get ambushed, and it's the story of them surviving uh, with very little uh, ammo left. Uh, true, true, true very story. true story. Yeah. All true. And uh, surviving and getting rescued. And uh, the losses that came out of that. And, uh, and how significant it was in a big turning point in the war with Iraq. So I play one of the men in that. Uh, I play one of the 19 men. And I play one of the youngest guys, uh, yeah. obviously. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a uh, very, very spiritual experience. It's, in, in what way was it spiritual? Well, the, the soldiers, they go through, It's they parallel it to the home front. They've got the soldiers on the battlefield and the, the families at home. Yeah. And the families at home, it, it deals a lot with you know, them uh, being in church and having that faith and, and just holding on. Yeah. And, and it's just a, it's a nice parallel between that holding on and the battlefield. Holding yeah. on. And it kind of just comes together beautifully all over the eight episodes. Was this one of the hardest roles that you played? Definitely. By far the hardest role. It yeah. was very emotionally grueling. It was, it was also very difficult because I've never been a soldier yeah. in my life. 
after doing this, it, it gave me a, a great love for the military, the Army specifically. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would love to do more of that. Right. Absolutely. Good. Thank yeah. you, sir. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Thank all you. Thank you, Why is it all of a sudden there are so many almost weekly Christian movies coming out? Sure. Part of it is that the audience has really engaged for the first time. Uh, for many decades, Christians did not participate in the box office, didn't show up as consumers. Yeah. And so Hollywood made movies that didn't cater to them. But uh, beginning with The Passion of the Christ and early even before that even with Chariots of Fire, there were some inklings of it. But The Passion of the Christ really for the first time, Christian consumers turned out in large numbers. Yeah. And so Hollywood had to say, wait a minute, we've got to find a way to create movies that reach this audience. And so. You're seeing some fits and starts, but it's the audience really coming as consumers that's made a big difference. What about the quality of these new films? Do you think they're up to up to par? Um, a lot of them aren't, but some of them are. So yeah. it's a mixed bag. Yeah. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, the, the quality of film should be the same quality level yeah. as the uh, mainstream ones. And I like to really encourage uh, studios to spend the same amount of money they would spend on a faith film as they would on a regular one, so that the quality is just as good. Now you also are, uh, are quite a prolific author, but you've got a book. Is it just about out, or it's coming out about That's right. rock, rock and roll? It's coming out in 12 days, and you're a good old rock and roller as well, <laughs> with your friendship with Rick Wakeman. Uh, the, the book is called uh, Rock Gets Religion, and the subtitle is The Battle for the Soul of the Devil's Music. <laughs> and Alice Cooper wrote the foreword to me, yeah. so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but we're coming out February 13th, and uh, excited to have it out there. And what, what are some of the, the, who are some of the people you feature in this? Sure. The, the book is really about how uh, people of faith, and Christians in particular, have returned to mainstream music. Uh, CCM, or contemporary Christian music as a genre, has kind of broken down and artists have really flooded the mainstream. And so, if you're at Starbucks or at the gym, the chances are pretty high that you're listening to a song by a Christian artist. You just don't even realize it. Uh, it's happening in hip-hop, in rock, in pop. They're literally everywhere. Yeah. And so the book is really an exploration of that. Alice Cooper is a great example. You know, uh, 40 years ago, 30, 20, 10 years ago, his pastor would have said, okay, you're a Christian now, cut your hair, change your name back to your birth name, and sing hymns. Yeah. Uh, but this new generation of pastors is saying, heck, Alice's pastor said, hey, stay put, yeah. you're Alice Cooper, change your lyrics, but don't lose your old fans because you cut your hair and you're singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> also, new artists that are Christians are coming up and going into the mainstream business. Yeah. And the final phenomenon is the American Idol phenomenon, really caused a young Christian artist to go in the mainstream and, and not be sidelined in the, in the Christian world. Right. So when people have read the book, Mark, what do you want them to take away? Well, I think there are lessons for whatever line of work you're in, and that is uh, to do your best to try to stay in a place where the world can access your ideas. Sometimes if we are shoveled off into the Christian subculture, the world loses access to us. And so it's important uh, for these artists and for all of us, whatever we're doing, yeah. to try to make sure our work is accessible to people outside of the Christian community. Good. Mark, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, my friend. I uh, produced, uh, co-wrote, and directed Bitter Harvest, which is a movie that tells a never-before story internationally about Joseph Stalin man-made famine that killed 8 million people, Ukrainians. My mother survived simply because he wanted to eradicate the culture and, and implement communism and collectivization, and the Ukrainians were impartial to that. So, um, it's a film about faith, it's a film about God, it's a film about country, and it's a film about family and loving those things. And it's a love story like Dr. Shibago if you're looking for a paradigm. And so, uh, it's an important film, and um, we're, we're so happy to be here because, um, you know, Movie Guide and Dr. Bear is basically um, joining the clarion of, 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 of voices and, and, and supporting people that have no voice anymore. And that's important. Is the film a feature film or a documentary? Yes, it's a total feature film, like Dr. Shivago was. So it's a love story. And one of the themes is also that love triumphs overall, including death. And so uh, it's a film about love.
love and faith if you want to just distill it. Yeah. How did you research it? Well, um, I read an awful lot of books, and like I said, my mother survived it, so she, I grew up as a baby boy yeah. listening to the horrors, yeah. and I thought the world knew, but it really doesn't. A lot of Ukrainians don't know because of fake news. The New York Times tried to cover it up with their star reporter, and you were a reporter, so you know, um, by Walter Duranti, who got the Pulitzer Prize for lying. He said, oh, it's bad weather, it's poor malnutrition, but he knew what was going on, but he was um, Joseph Stalin's show, and he didn't let the, the news get out to the world. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, 168film.com is the, the uh, website, and what we do is we give filmmakers a chance to make a short film based on scripture, and it's based on a theme, a verse, and a week. And we've been making films for 15 years, started in 2003, and we give these filmmakers a scripture. This year is based on the theme, Power, and so we'll, we'll take stuff from the Bible that has to do with power, or either abuse of power, or good use of power, or ill use of power, whatever, and they'll have 10 days to read this scripture, and then figure out what it means, write a script, cast locations and all that, and then they get ready for when the gun goes off and they have exactly 168 hours for one week to shoot and edit this short film. It can be 11 or 12 minutes long, and uh, this is our probably 1100th film that we've made, will be made this year. Why do you think there are so many faith movies now? I mean, they're, they're just coming almost weekly. I think, the, I think the, the quality of these movies are, are, are getting better. Yeah. Um, and so people are wanting to see more of them. You know, I mean, we're getting, you know, movies like I'm uh, presenting tonight for this movie called Case for Christ. Yes. It's a great movie. Um, and the quality is, 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 is beautiful and brilliant. I think people are starting to be able to recognize that. Yeah. And so obviously the marketplace will follow. It, so it's great. Hi there, my name is Taylor James. I'm playing Samson in Pure Fix's new biblical epic, Samson the Movie. Right. Tell us a bit about your background. You're from... I'm from England myself. I've yeah. spent the last 10 or 12 years in theatre in the London's West End. Yeah. Uh, my last theatre job was a year with Kenneth Branagh, Sir Kenneth Branagh, and yeah. Dame Judi Dench. Uh, we did a Shakespeare season. We did Romeo and Juliet. We did yeah. The Winter's Tale. And prior to that, I've worked at the National Theatre, the Donmar, uh, the Old Vic, yeah. and uh, just learned my education on the stage. Yeah. Great plays, great storytellers, great directors, great actors. It's, it's been a wonderful history. And, and as I've matured into a... Uh, uh, a late 30s gentleman, I've wanted to move more in towards film and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I keep a, a strong physical disposition and therefore I want to go for those big powerful roles. So when Samson came along it was a prime opportunity for me and I'm so glad that uh, we got to team up and, and make it happen. Now, is, is Samson a feature film or animation? Samson is a feature film. Yeah. We filmed it in South Africa last year for three and a half months. It comes out two weeks time from February the 16th. Um, it's running time just under two hours. It's full of action, drama, and uh, a huge amount of emotion. We've got Lindsay yeah. Wagner, who plays my mother, bionic woman. Rooka Howard, the Academy Award winner, plays my father. Yeah. Billy Zane's in there, Jackson Rathbone. Caitlin Liais plays uh, Delilah. And uh, Taylor James playing Samson. <laughs> Did you have to do any research on something? Yeah, I did all the research that is uh, that is out there. A lot of scripture work. A lot of uh, I watched a lot of pastors talk about Samson. Um, I consulted with a lot of um, priests, yeah. and and basically just formed uh, an opinion of what I thought Samson was. Yeah. When I read the script and teamed up with the director, it was it was fundamental for me to connect with Samson. Yeah. And I wanted to understand why he was so reluctant. Yeah. Why he's this flawed hero? Why why does everybody think he's the He's the goofball, the mess up in the Bible story. He's not. Yeah. He was just a young man who made yeah. a few impulsive decisions and yeah. had to learn along the way, as we all do as humans. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Oh, my absolute Appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you. And, you. and you keep rocking it, yeah? <laughs> this is the one and only Bo Derek. Have you been to one of these before? No, never have. Wow. There are so many family-friendly films now. Do, yeah. do you welcome that or not? Yes, I do. In fact, I made one uh, just last year called Christmas in the Heartland. We were in Guffley, Oklahoma. It's a great, it's a lovely family story. Yeah. 
What, what, what are your plans now for the future? Acting plans? Uh, not at the moment, producing. Yeah. Wasp. Yeah, that's great. That's what you're doing. Yeah, you? that's what I'm doing now. That's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So what do you think of, of this movie back there? Pretty good? It's fantastic. It's, I've been to all 26. Can What's you up that? with The Simpsons? The Simpsons is we're rolling on season 29, and 29. we're picked up for a 30th season. We're going to pass Gunsmoke. Later this year is the longest running scripted show. You heard it here, folks. Yes. You heard it here. The razor doesn't oh, lie. The razor's edge. It's sharp. <laughs> if you ever watch The Simpsons and you see the incredible artwork that goes on, this is the man to blame, Lance Wilder. Now, Lance, before we go any further, you have just really made history. You've had a photograph of yourself taken by a very well-known movie star. Tell us about it. Yeah, apparently uh, Bo Derek just took a picture of me and the amazing Pat Boone. <laughs> and we were just talking, and uh, she looked awfully familiar. I didn't know it was Bo Derek, but she took my phone and took a picture of Pat and I. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Maybe you could get Bo Derek to come on uh, The Simpsons now. That would be great. We've had so many people over the years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the 29th season right now. We're picked up for a 30th season next year. Who, who's been your all-time favorite or favorites of the come into studio? Well, I, I, I would say we've had so many people over the years and many favorites for different reasons, but I have to say that uh, Ringo Starr, Paul and Linda McCartney, and George Harrison. Now, you've been coming here many, many years. All 26. 20, that's all right. All 26 I've been to, which is amazing. Well, we were, must have been together at the first. We didn't know each other. Then. Yes, the lunch. Yeah, Hollywood press. Yes, the Hollywood press call. Why do you keep coming? First of all, I keep coming because I love Ted and Lily Bear and their family. They're a second family to me. What Ted has done over these past 20, 25, 30 years is amazing. And he's here to uh, uh, basically uphold the Gospels and to praise the people in television and film that are holding, whether it's technically Christian or not, holding up Judeo-Christian biblical values in film and television. I mean, the Bible is the greatest story ever written. And, and when, he, when you see and hear stories about people, from all walks of life that uphold biblical truths, it resonates with people mm. around the world. And uh, Ted will be the first to tell you that he's here to lift up the good and praise the good and encourage people from top to bottom in Hollywood and elsewhere to uh, keep backing stories and television and film productions that encourage people and ultimately, hopefully, will point them to Jesus and scripture. Well, there you have it, a very interesting group of people. We've had a lot of bad publicity here in Tinseltown, but there's a lot of great people here who are standing up for Jesus Christ, and I hope you enjoyed the show Inside Hollywood.